Let's go ahead and take a look, ladies and gentlemen, at some of the information we have. Um, again, they're asking us to find the Excel, um, to find a position function. So automatically, when I know I need to find the position function, I know I need to find the velocity function. And right there, I don't have enough information to find the velocity function. function. So therefore, I need to look to the acceleration function. And I do have enough information for the acceleration function. They're basically saying my acceleration function is negative 32 feet per second squared. So I can say a sub t. Actually, it's right over here. a sub t is equal to negative 32 feet per second squared. And I'm just, for the math, I'm just going to leave this, um, the units out. And therefore, well, I know then, if I, can, if I know the acceleration, can I find the velocity? Sure, of course I can. So if I integrate a sub t dt, that's going to give me v sub t. Right? That gives me my velocity. The integral of the acceleration gives me back my velocity. So when I integrate negative 32 with respect to t, I am then going to get negative 32 t plus c. So now I can say v sub t equals negative 32 t plus c. Okay. Now. When we look at this, though, guys, again, remember what we practiced last class period was always finding the general solution, right? And today we're working on finding the particular solution, right? So to find, to find um, the position function, we can't have c there. So we need to be able to figure out, all right, based on velocity, based on my velocity function, is there enough information I know that I can solve for c? So remember v sub t equals negative 32 t plus c. Do I know a given velocity at a certain given time? Yes, and what is that? At time 0, I know the velocity is 64. So I could say 64 equals negative 32 times 0 plus c. Therefore, 64 is equal to c. So I could say my velocity function is negative 32 t plus 64. But again, we're not looking for velocity. We're, lo we're looking for the position function. So now I need to integrate my velocity function to obtain my position function. So if I go ahead and integrate um, negative 32t plus 64d sub t, I end up getting negative 32t squared divided by 2 plus 64t plus c. So therefore, I could say my position function x of, why do I keep on doing this? x of t equals negative 16t squared plus 64t plus c. <sighs> then again, now we need to go and look to it. Do I know a time interval? Again, do I know another time interval and position that can help me find itself for c? Yes, what is the, what at, at t equals 0, what is my position? 80. So I have enough information now. So I could say 80 equals negative 16, 0 squared plus 64, 0 plus c. So 80 equals c. So therefore, my position function, which is question number 1, is going to be negative 16 t squared plus 64 t plus 80. Is everybody with me on solving question number one? OK. So we had to do quite a bit of work, though, to get to question number one. For question number two, it says find the position function given the height that the next find when the ball hits the ground. So we talked about this. The position, the ball hits the ground when x of t is equal to 0. So unfortunately, I'm going to erase this stuff over here. We know that question number two occurs when 0 equals negative 16 t squared plus 64 t plus 80. And then I look to see what I can factor out. I know I can factor out an 8. Um, and I can factor out a 16, right? No? 32, 64, 70, 80, yeah. So if I factor out a 16, I'm left with 0 equals a negative 16 t 
squared minus 4t minus 5 equals 0. 0 equals t squared minus 4t minus 5. So basically divide the 16 on both sides. Oops. And then I can factor that into t minus um, 0 equals t minus 5 times t plus 1, t equals 5, and t equals negative 1. However, ladies and gentlemen, is does it make sense for our time interval to be negative? No. So t equals 5 is going to be when the ball hits the ground. So that's answer to question number 2. And then, last but not least, is what is the velocity when the ball hits the ground? Well, it hits the ground at t equals 5. So now I need to evaluate for v sub 5. And of course, the line that I deleted was my velocity function, which was what? Negative 32. So v sub t equals what? Negative 32. Hello. Um, yeah, you can just put them right there. It was what plus or plus 64? So therefore, v sub 5 equals negative 32 times 5 plus 64. So let's see, 264, 4 would be 128. 30, 60, 160, so it'd be negative 96. So v sub 5 would equal negative 96, and that is a velocity, so that's going to be feet per second. And this would actually be in seconds. And that's the question to number 3. Huh? Yes, I did. Negative, negative 32 times 5 was negative 160. Anybody have any questions on that? OK. Um, I am comfortable where we left off.